We're glad to have you joining us online today. We really are with us. He's a fellow Canadian, music man, and now host of the ABC singing competition show Duets. I was also his intern at MTV. Please welcome Caduce. Hey, everybody. We've hey. all come a long way. You've come a long way. I'm so <laughs> proud of you, girl. Look at you. Oh, you're so showing everything. You're so sweet. You got my coffee back in the day. <laughs> I, did. I did get it for you this morning, too. No. <laughs> She's a beautiful actress, a Twitter lover, and star on the hit HBO show, True Blood, Janina Gavinkar. Oh. Oh. Look at this one. You know what's awesome about what? this is that we're actually friends. We're friends. This isn't like a showbiz friend I'm thing. I'm a good person to book. Like, I yeah. book. I, I, How chemistry. did you know? We I also haven't seen each other in so long, so he, I just learned this term. Unfortunately, this in LA, term, you hang out. On a show. Yeah, yeah, that's all that's all we have time for, but that's okay. That's okay. All right. Yeah. And Who's our, this guy? Uh, well, yeah. he is our captain of SS Social Media this week, Craig Frank. Yay! Uh, and thank you for allowing me to be in your studio. Uh, you too can be a part of the discussion by joining the live chat on youtube.com slash what's trending or tweeting us at what's trending. Do it, and we're following you, so tweet us your questions, your comments, anything. We are following. How are you guys doing? Now we go back to talking to you. Magnificent. Duet. How are you doing? Congratulations, thank you. Caduce. Thank you. You. I'm so happy to see you hosting this big show. It's such a huge deal. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's the evolution of the music show. A lot of people ask me, like, what's the difference between yeah. your show and the other singing competition shows? Because it felt like there was a saturation point going on in the genre. But we're actually managing to break the mold a little bit and do something that's never been done. And does it work seeing these huge stars performing alongside regular talented people? Yeah, it's kind regular of a story. <laughs> 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 It's like, what if these people outsing their duet then it partner? Makes it, the star feel really bad. Yeah, and then the yeah. star's not going to feel too good about it. I think their egos are just fine. They can sustain <laughs> yeah, right. a little oh. bit of a loss oh. on that oh, note. Really? No, it's listen. They're stars. They get they're it. Stars. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like yeah, they yeah. have to be oblivious not to realize it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's really a, a, a very surreal thing still for people. Like we're three weeks in now. And people are still looking at it like, oh, that, that's somebody I don't know singing with Kelly Clarkson, and she seems to actually care. Wow. You know? Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's a, it it's a pretty awesome dynamic. And uh, you're seeing some of the amateurs kind of rise to the, rise to the occasion. And some of them are a little bit starstruck and like uh, bugging out as they're trying to hit notes. So it's really it's entertaining. For yeah. Sure. Uh, one of the things I've watched on another show that will remain nameless is that um, you know it's interesting to watch the the amateurs. It's weird that you're calling them the amateurs, well, but okay. Amateurs. By the end of this process, they will be professionals. For but, lack of a better term. Um, okay. But yeah, like the newbies, you know, deal mm -hmm. with the mentors and 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 the sort of and people either rise to the occasion or they falter and. Yeah. That's an it's interesting survival kind of the fittest in Hollywood. incubation Absolutely. thing. Yeah, yeah. It definitely is. And then you keep up with social media. I mean, it was so interesting leading up to this. You have your Q side. Yeah, I love that. Side. I have opinions about his name. Please. Remember when we had a conversation about what? your Twitter name? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, she coached me on my Twitter game. Yeah, really yeah. Early. When yeah. we first met, I was like, you need to change this, and you need to do this, and this, <laughs> and, and if you add someone at the beginning of the thing, then your fans can't say it unless they're following them. Also, oh, yeah. I had to give him the whole. We and literally had a whole lunch yeah, powwow. Really? Yes, yeah. we had yeah. a live tweet during the show now too. That's important. Yeah, it's it's been fun. It's really cool to see live what's happening in people's psyche as they're watching this. Because, I mean, yeah, this this is a it's a very special show. People are like having real strong reactions to the show. It's cool. Cool, and I'm excited to see you go live soon. Oh yeah, and June twenty eighth. Yeah, after I'll be live tweeting in the audience. Uh -huh. Janina, yes. great to see you. We bumped into each other at Geek to Chic at this we, runway show. We did. You were hilarious, by the way. Thank you. Hilarious. I, I work hard at that. I was very impressed by the way you handled you're that. You're a sweetheart. But you're a geek. <laughs> I am. Tell me how that got started. The geek de Well, I was born, and um, <laughs> my father is an engineer, and my oh, mother... Really? Yeah, yeah, you know, he, he... Yeah, so the geek strain runs strong in my family. <laughs> but then you ended up an actress in LA. You didn't decide yeah. to pursue that. No, well, I mean, I grew up studying music, so I'm like a music nerd, mm -hmm. okay? That's the kind of nerd. I, everything's kind of nerdy with me. But um, but yeah, I kind of realized I wanted to be an actor late in high school and then changed my whole focus and then moved here after I <laughs> was in a girl group, started to catch money, and then it started falling apart, as girl groups do. And then I moved here and uh, started my acting career. And you have a new album coming out. I do. I'm working on an EP right now with a guy from another singing show. You can say his name, Randy Jackson. Yeah, Randy Jackson. So Randy uh, kind of fell out of the sky and said, I, yo, I totally believe in you. <laughs> he literally <laughs> fell out of the sky. He's like, out of nowhere, like, he just popped ha -ha! Yeah. You, you're weird. Stay weird. <laughs> and then go make some weird music and then come back. So he's he's so supportive in everything that I could have dreamed of. So. And so what the sound, what can people expect um, from I would you? say that this is like, 
I, I would say my musical identity on this is somewhere between Imogen Heap, Sade, and wow. Sheila E. Because I play percussion, so it's sort of like it's it's hyper musical. <laughs> That is it's awesome. really time intensive. So every day that I'm not on set of True Blood, I'm in the studio engineering and producing and doing all of the craziness that it takes to make this sound. It's going to be great. I, I hope feel so. so now, but speaking really of is. True Blood, though, nice. you've been shooting. Yeah. You said that it's pretty intense. It's, it's so intense. It's, uh, right now, it's nice because it's warm outside. Yes. So when we start our seasons, we start at the end of the year. We do eight months of the year for 12 That's episodes. That's wild. Like, usually we actors, you're like, oh, I have the whole year off. The year no, off. No, 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 no. No, no, no. We have four months off, and we start late in the year. So all of those outdoor scenes are night shoots, and we're freezing our butts off. Literally, our behinds are freezing because they're out. <laughs> and <laughs> so, but now, you know, our night shoots are nice and warm and, and it's, uh, it's, it ends up being an okay end of the season. And it's premiering soon. Not so, just soon, as in how many days now? What's no, it, this what weekend, day of the week June 10th. Is? Is it? June 10th. Yeah. June 10th. June This Sunday. Six. I'm losing yeah. track of time. I know. This Sunday. Do you have viewing parties yourself? No. I did for, for the premiere of duets. It was I, off yeah, the I know I was supposed to be there, but I didn't get to go. go. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. All right. What We're can really we sorry that we didn't you make know, it. People usually ask you what can they expect. What can you not expect? <laughs> <laughs> what can you not expect? I, mean, I was I trying to play like games. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, that was pretty shysty, but <laughs> I can't tell you anything. Um, oh, I can tell you that the, speaking of bums, the bum count, you're going to see five different bums in the first episode. No way. Yours? No. You That's why I feel so okay talking about it. It's like, it's not mine, folks, so say, though, <laughs> enjoy. Like, the first episode I saw you it was, was Buck Naked. Were we together? No, we weren't together. I'm sure I watched I watched that one by myself somewhere. <laughs> like, I will not be with anyone when, somebody, when everybody watches it. All right, so we are all excited for both of your shows. <laughs> no, we are. No, I love it. You mean you she don't was, want to talk about her being Buck Naked anymore? No, I love oh, yeah, Buck. Yeah, yeah. We actually have a lot of teens watching for Cody Simpson right now. Oh, all right. yes. No, but it's okay. We don't care. I mean, I'm just playing. You better not. But watching let's move on to our first story because we have a ton of stories to get to <laughs> today. Okay, okay. All right. Men invented the internet. Did you know that? No, they didn't. At least that's what David Streitfeld's article in the New York Times on Saturday said. Many commentators and female leaders in the tech world have sounded off, as you can imagine, including Jenny Jardin, co-founder of Boing Boing, who posted this, quote, every woman who worked in technology for the past 150 years frown upon you, sir. Women may have been invisible, but the work we did laid the groundwork for more visible advancements, now credited to more famous men. So Janina, you come from an engineering <laughs> family. This is actually perfect for you. What do you think about the New York Times article and then her rebuttal? Okay, well, this is the, the sort of uh, percent of women being involved in the tech community and in business and yeah. it is a problem, okay? Mm -hmm. So this, this article said that 9.1% of the board members in Silicon Valley as a whole are women. That's a very mm -hmm. low number. That's supposed to be the 16% in the S&P 500, but the thing that's crazy I love how you remember that. I have in my notes in my team. Yeah, well, well okay, so, but, so then like if you, if I did a little bit more research because I am nerdy and like, Last night, I did all, found all these statistics, and the major problem is that, like, okay, so you have to remember that over 50% of the workforce in the U.S. is female. And then, okay, here's an example. The Forbes list came out last year. The, mm -hmm. Fortune, the, 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 Forbes, the Fortune 500 list came yeah. out, and it was, there was this big headline, oh, we're so happy that, that the, the number of female CEOs is at an all-time high. You want to so take a guess at, you want to take a guess at what that number was, Caduce? <laughs> what? Um. 500, 500 CEOs. How many do you think was the all-time high for that number? 30? How about 18? Out of 18 yeah. of the 500 are CEOs. So this is business as a whole. So is this okay? a result of us? Or of women or of society allowing us? I would like roles. to blame everything on everyone else. No. Yeah, right? <laughs> no. Look, I mean, it's, the, the glass ceiling is a very real thing. I think that if I want to be completely honest, I felt them in many a scenario, um, especially being a geek in the geek community. Uh, it, I was at E3 yesterday, and I could feel that I was a girl at E3. And everyone was staring at well, you. Well, no, it wasn't that. It was just every conversation I had, was it was it was people were fascinated by the fact that the words coming out of my mouth had any kind of intelligence in the world of gaming, geekery, or technology at all. And it was a bit infuriating. And that's surprising considering how many people are in this in this community right yes. now. How many women? I mean, yes, you're it's at ridiculous. meetups in, in companies with women. Like, why is it surprising for someone to say something? It that shouldn't might be, be surprising anymore, but the number is still, the ratio is still, I mean, to I, I have a solution. I have a solution. Okay. This might seem a little off the wall, but I just think that the solution is that you women just need to Start appreciating porn more. Talk about it more. 
Wow. He's got some more. And I'll tell you no, why. Can you bring that into this conversation? Because, you know, the, the <laughs> most traffic thing on the internet is porn. Am I right? Yeah, I, think, I guess so. I yes. think it used to be. It, it, is it anymore? I feel like video games is one of the biggest thing, games. Wow. Both things. Y'all could get more involved. Oh you see, my yeah. God. it's your fault for the not fact getting is, more or into porn is, or video just, games. Wait, are people just sick of this conversation in general? I, I know a lot of people, you know, there has been TechCrunch blogs about this. Mashable everywhere. They're like, why are we even talking about this? Women in tech, all these tech, girls in tech meetups. Like, should we even, even be having this conversation or is this creating more of uh, a barrier? Um, well, I don't know. I mean, look, if you talk about the boys club and, and boys supporting boys, girls have to support girls and, yeah. you know, mentorship programs and all these things need to happen for things to even out, I yeah. think. All right. Well, speaking of this blog, actually, for more in-depth look, we go to Forbes writer, techie and founder of the startup Teach Me Stuff, Tara Brown, who's on Skype, who's actually uh, friends with Jenny. How are you, Tara? I'm great. Thanks. Nice to see you. And a lot of people, uh, you know, sounded off on this besides Jenny. People reacted, and actually Craig has some of those tweets. Um, and you probably saw these, Tara, yourself. People, after Jenny came out, sharing their stories of grandmothers, mothers that have been tech execs, mm -hmm. engineers, taught them programming mm -hmm. growing up. Um, what did you think about the New York Times article, Tara, and the reactions that came from it? Well, I mean, it was that first paragraph was obviously inflammatory because if you, you know, read the 20 other paragraphs in the story, it was around that um, the woman who was suing her firm. So, I mean, it's like it's just the usual thing when you're reading stories now is that, you know, you have to try and get your audience. But I think that Shani's post on Boing Boing um, did a great job in sort of talking about the overall issues that we're still facing in tech, you know, as women. I mean, it hasn't changed, even though maybe some people like to report on the stats improving. It's still it's still a upward uh, climb. So what are we supposed to do as a community to make some sort of change happen? Or is it just about evolution? Well, I love the conversation happening, for sure. Yeah, yeah I absolutely. think it's very similar to how, I mean, black people have been uh, very underrepresented in so many different aspects of our society and it's taken affirmative action taking like a very very strong stance and building it into the infrastructure to actually make something happen you know so well an interesting tweet uh, from Adam Beatty was uh, it's not even just erasing women in tech it's also the clear claim that maleness has something to do with the achievement mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. absolutely erasing yeah. the fact that you know women are involved in any, yeah. anything well, Tara, you run a tech startup. You've actually mapped out all of the startups in Los Angeles also. Um, so how many of those startups are run by women? Actually, very few. I spent a while kind of going through and looking at the, the teams, the, the, uh, the founders, and very small percentage. <laughs> I hope you included what's trending, because I am a, a female co-founder. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Now, Jenny also mentioned a ton of female leaders in history that have made an impact and have been tech pioneers. Um, wh which are a few that resonate to you that we might forget sometimes? Why is it always the Steve Jobs and Bill Gates that, or Mark Zuckerberg's now that we refer to? Well, I think any of the women that graduated from MIT or are actually currently professors at the MIT Media Lab are phenomenal. Um, there's one woman in particular that I think we should you know, she'd have, definitely have more Twitter followers, and uh, her name is Rosalind Picard. Um, she actually started the whole um, uh, research around effective computing, which is essentially figuring out how to, uh, to have computers understand human emotions and actually emulate them, and I think that that's pretty phenomenal. That is awesome. Any final words today you want to share? Is, should we be having this conversation, or do you think people are going to see this video and going, come on? Females in tech, are we really still talking about this? Um, I think we should, but I think it's really important that any women that are in tech um, try a little bit harder to talk about what they're doing um, and then having everyone else you know, in the community promote what they're doing. So at least in LA, that's part of what I'm trying to do with my ladies tech group called Lady Tacos, um, <laughs> is to you know, support women who are interested in tech or just want to look for a group to hang out and build cool stuff. So. Let's just talk about it more. Thank you. Well, thank you for talking about it with us today, Tara. Thank and you. And you can follow Tara on Twitter at Tara. Read her at Forbes.com.